everybody. Uh, welcome to Chin Fat. This is going to be the second episode of series of three that I'm doing on uh, talking about compressing footage, uh, compressing and transcoding. The first episode, we kind of went through all the definitions, the differences between compressing and transcoding. In this one, I'm going to show two different things. We're going to show on the timeline here how to export and finalize it. If you're finalizing a project, how to export it out. Uh, if you want to master your file, uh, meaning you're going to have a, a full high quality project uh, file that you're going to be using as a master to encode it to other footage later on. Uh, and then also compressing it for uses such as YouTube, Vimeo, or other means if, if you're asking for like a film festival or some place where it's going to be delivered, a digital cinema package or anything else you're going to be delivering. Uh, we're going to kind of show it, go through a bunch of that different stuff here. Uh, one thing I want to touch on really quick is if you're doing uh, footage to proxies, and I've got completely different episodes on this, full episodes on showing how to properly encode uh, something like red footage to proxies or stuff with a stereo audio file versus a uh, mono file, a uh, variety of different types of footage. And you got to be kind of aware of that if you're, if, you're, if you're transcoding a bunch of clips or compressing a bunch of clips for proxy. Uh, like, let me show you an example down here. As I select this clip down here, uh, kind of the nature that it's showing right here is, uh, first of all, You've got uh, the dimensions, and of course, so show, you could cut that those dimensions in half, which would give you, which would, uh, if you're taking this for proxy footage, you can cut those dimensions in half if you'd like. Uh, you want to leave the frame rate uh, the same frame rate, uh, oftentimes, uh, so it doesn't mess with the time code. But then right here is one thing you have to be concerned about. And like I said, I've got a full episode on this explaining how to uh, make sure that you get the proper audio. Right here, this is not a stereo audio. This red footage has two mono channels. When you export that out, let's say we're exporting a bunch of footage out for proxy, so just really quick a real refresher on this I'm going to hit uh, I'm on a Mac right now instead of a PC so I'm going to hit command M on a PC it would be control M M as in mommy or media I'm gonna I'm gonna hit command M and I'll bring open this window like I said I'm going to show you guys how to do the YouTube compression here in a minute for a project but I just want to quickly get this out of the way and say you're doing proxy footage and we're taking this to maybe ProRes let's go down to QuickTime I'm going to pro do ProRes proxy I'll uh, pull this down to ProRes pro Proxy because we're going to deliver this red footage as proxy to the editor. Uh, but right now I'm going to have export video, export audio, and uh, we're going to go down. We're going to bring down the resolution. So it literally will cut the file size in half just by doing this little thing right here. So if we uncheck this and we do... Um, well, and first of all, we want to make sure that this is the proper aspect ratio because this these this footage here is this footage here is 4096 by 2160. So let's get a calculator and figure out what that, that resolution would be cut in half. 4096 divided by two equals 2048. And uh, the other one is going to be 2160 divided by two is uh, should be 19 or uh, 1080. I mean, so uh, so the first number that I was going to use. So my resolution will be 2048 by 1080. Uh, so let's grab all this footage again. Uh, Control or Command M. Uh, QuickTime ProRes LT down to proxy. We're going to go down and we're going to change this here, width and height. We're going to uncheck that and we're going to change this to just the top one. I'm going to, I've got this, first of all, if you don't want this to change proportionally, I'm going to, un, I'm going to make sure, sure this link is turned off. It has a slash, slash through it. And I'm going to go 2048 by 1080. There we go. So that's set. The other thing I want to do is change my audio here. So the audio, I'm going to click on audio and I'm going to go down and uh, this is not a stereo file. This is where people get in trouble relinking their footage because they do, they, uh, the proxy footage does not match the, the, the nature of the audio that you're recording, that has been recorded on this footage. So right now, like I said, I selected it and it said two mono. So I'm going to go down here, scroll down and just say, um, we're going to change this to a mono, but it has two channels. So I'm going to have to add one channel. You do the little plus down here, plus, and now I've got two mono channels. So right there, that matches the very nature of this red footage. And I can hit Q and send it to, uh, to Media Encoder. Media Encoder opens up and it populates my list here of things to format. I can change the settings here if I want to. I can do Command A to select all. I'll click in this window first of all and hit Command A or Control A on a PC. Uh, now in here, uh, I've already customized this the way I want it to. So I, I like the way it is, but if you have to change it, I've got everything selected. I can click on this custom right here and it'll set, set warn me that I'm like selecting multiple clips. I can just say, okay. And it'll bring open this window here for it'll change the settings on all those clips. And I've already got it set for proxy. I've set the resolution. But let's say you want to add something like you can go to effects and add a time code burn into this. It may be requested by the editor. I'm gonna check mark uh, time code and uh, it'll show my time code overlay there. We'll keep it centered, we can adjust it here. All right, so now I hit okay and it's added that time code burn to all this footage right here, to all that footage, and I've customized it, each one of those. So everything is set for the same. The only thing I have to change now is my location. I can go over here with everything selected still. Uh, if everything's not selected like this, you do 
you know, just click in this window somewhere and then do Command A, Control A and select everything. And I'm gonna click on the output file and choose location. And uh, let's go, I'm just gonna go to this tutorial folder here. and I'm gonna make a new, new folder. And I'm gonna call this, uh, this was the Platinum commercial. So I call this Platinum Proxies. Hit OK, um, then choose. And now the location for all these files is in the same folder. All I have to do is go up and press play and it will turn all these things to proxies. And uh, then I can import them into a project and start editing them like they are the originals. And then later on, we can relink them to the originals. I've, like I said, I've got a bunch of, I've got a couple other tutorials on showing that whole process. I'm just kind of going through the basics of compression here. So uh, I'm just going to delete these right now. And let's go into showing you guys how to do a uh, export out a project here. Um, all right, so we're in our timeline here. I'm gonna hit Command M. Now, you, if you're just exporting a single project, you can do it in uh, Compressor or you can do it in in, um, um, in Premiere Pro. Uh, either way, if you hit Q, it will send it to Compressor. That way you can keep working on other projects while editing and, and you, keep, you can keep editing on other projects while your footage is being compressed. It slows down your system a little bit, but you can come into, into uh, Premiere and keep exporting out pro, um, more projects to it. So let's actually go Q here. I'm going to hit Q and send it over to Media Encoder. Like I said, you can do it all here, but this, but uh, Media Encoder will have the same functions that you have inside of uh, Premiere. So let's hit Q, sends it to Media Encoder. There it is. Here's my project. I'm exporting out of my timeline, out of my 1080 timeline. One thing to keep in mind, if you're doing this out of a uh, 4K timeline right now, let's go to my original project here and look at this timeline here. There are my timelines right there. Uh, there's a 1080 timeline. You look up here. Yeah, this is 1920 by 1080. Edit sequence. Here's the, uh, let's pretend like this is my final project, but in 4K. Uh, this is in 4K, but let's let's double click on that. It's it's not a finished project in here though, but let's let's say that, that is a, well, let's say that that is a 4K one that we want to export out. We have 4096 by 2160. Uh, so we've got the 4096 and we've got the 1080 timeline. I'm going to go to the 4096. I'm going to do Command M. So you can keep sending these sequences over to, um, over to Media Encoder by hitting Q, and now I can keep working in Premiere if I have to send more stuff over. So now inside of Media Encoder here, I've got two projects here uh, that I'm gonna export. This is my 4K one, this is my 1080 one. Uh, we can make these shared uh, settings or we can do these separately. Uh, let's say I'm delivering this to uh, YouTube. What you can do is over here on the left, you got this little drop down for presets here. You click on this and go down, and YouTube uses an H.264 preset. So I'm gonna click, pull this down and go down to H.264. Now I'm gonna pull down this little item here and you have a whole bunch of uh, presets already. So this is a 1080, so I can click on YouTube 1080 Full HD. I'm not done yet. Let's say we wanna do, we wanna make something with a little bit higher quality. I'm going to click on the, this name right here on that preset name and it will open it up and we can fine tune these preset settings here. This is from red footage. So we are going to be compressing. This is not transcoding. Well, we are transcoding. It's going from uh, QuickTime uh, ProRes to H.264, but we are compressing as well because we're removing data here to make this file smile, smaller and upload it to, and upload it to YouTube. Uh, so right now, since we're doing, we're going to do two things here. We're going to, I'm going to do a full, a four, we'll do this on the 4K. We'll show you guys how to master it. Let's say if you're making a master file that you're going to use later on, if you delete your whole project and have everything gone and you want to re retain your master fi uh, export file, you can do that as well. So let's go to um, H.264. We got this preset. We're going to move down. We're exporting both video and audio. Down here on the tab, we're not going to do any effects right now. I, in the next episode, I show how to do a little bit of effects. Here we showed the proxies doing the, uh, doing the time code overlay. Uh, but now I'm going to go to the video tab and we're going to show you what these things do here. If you want to match resolution, anything that you want to match, you just keep checkmarked over here. I'm going to match. Uh, and usually these are checkmarked by default. So we're just going to make sure that all four of those here at the top are checkmarked. If you want to maintain the same uh, resolution, frame rate, everything, just make sure they're checkmarked and it will match the clip. If you don't, you uncheck this and now you can change the resolution. If you have this little slash there uh, gone through that little chain, this changes the resolution proportionally. If we want this at a 720 resolution, the lower resolution, I hit 720 and click out, which what happens up here. It cha proportionally changes the width and the height. But if you wanna have a custom one, you can uncheck that and then you can change the resolution to whatever you want. See, we're adding just some big letter boxes there. So, but you can make the resolution whatever you want. You can go up here to source uh, scale to fit and you can tell it to scale to fit and that will scale the image in as much as it can. Uh, stretch to fill, uh, but, but scale to fit a bunch of different options up there. But right now we're just going to check mark this and it's going to use the same resolution 1920 by 1080. 
if you scroll down a little bit here, on, under encoding settings here, performance, you can tell it to do hardware, software encoding. Uh, hardware encoding will make it go faster because it's using the video card uh, profile. You have levels of quality here. Uh, the standard YouTube here has the level set within the high level. Uh, if you change this to main and baseline, this brings down the level of compression that it's doing. It brings up, up some different options. It, what it will do is it will change the amount of megabits per second uh, that you can encode to that footage. If you need to get it higher, you can go up to, you can tell this to do high 10, and now you can take this up to uh, unrestricted 6.2. These are just kind of arbitrary levels that Adobe has set. Uh, these don't really, I, as far as I know, these don't have any sort of scientific meaning necessarily. I could be wrong, but uh, that, this is the only compressing software that I see, I've seen that has this sort of profile setting. It's just categorizing what level of quality you're going to be doing, and it opens up different levels here as well. So I would say if you're just going to YouTube, you can keep these the same, but you're going to move down here. This is where you really get uh, some control is under your bitrate settings. Now you have three items under here. You have CBR, VBR one pass, and VBR two pass. This is a constant bitrate. Usually if you are trying to get, if you don't care how large your file is and you just want a really high quality file, you're going to use constant bitrate. You're going to grab this slider now and drag that up. Um, for something like this, see uh, right now the max that it gets me to is uh, 62.5. You can change that by going and choosing a higher uh, profile and then changing your, you can go to unrestricted there. And now you can grab this and keep sliding it up and it gets enormous. This is going to be huge, huge files. And I don't even think there's very many files that have this quite of uh, megabits per second. Uh, the most that you probably want to do, depending on the project, uh, um, I would not master to H.264 for a master file. But if you're going to YouTube, 50 megabits is going to kind of be the top the top that you want to go to because YouTube is going to rec recompress your footage anyway. Uh, so, but you see how bringing that up to high 10, let, let me take that level way up and I'm just going to put this down the highest we can go to. We're just going to go around like 4.2 and now down here because the most we really want to go to is maybe about 50 megabits per second at 1080. Uh, if you're going to 4K, you'd probably want to double that to 100 and that way you would have to do a higher level up here. But yeah, for, for YouTube, it's around like 30 megabits per second is going to be plenty large uh, for, for something 1920 by 1080. But constant bitrate, what it's going to do is going to encode this thing at uh, 30 megabits per second, and you're going to have an estimated file size of 113 mega megabytes. Variable bitrate one pass is uh, if you're in a hurry and you want your file size to be low. So CBR is if you want to higher, if you don't care about the size as much. VBR one pass will do one single pass on the encode, but it will change the data rate as it goes. As there's more action and dynamics in the image, it'll boost the image. But one pass, the problem that it does there is, is it's passing through. If a bunch of action picks up, like it suddenly cuts to a shot of like really ripply water, uh, you'll see a whole bunch of compression. Then it will slowly go away and it'll bring up the data rate as it hits that. But you're going to see that compression uh, for the time being. But it encodes it really fast, though. So I would say I rarely ever use one pass. Um, but you can still change the, the, the bit rate down here, the target bit rate. Uh, two pass is the best way to go. Uh, for most instances, because two pass, you can say, I want it to be around uh, maybe 15 megabits per second, which is going to be plenty for uh, static images and kind of still images. And it uses that that keyframe sort of uh, compression. I covered this in my last episode uh, where it uh, borrows information from a, a key frame of, of, of your footage and it borrows that color information and gives it to other uh, subsequent frames. But when, it, when the action picks up and it needs to be a higher compression level, you can tell, well, I want, it can go as high as maybe 35 megabits per second or 40. We can just click on here and go 40 megabits per second. So it can crank it way up if it needs it, but if it doesn't need it, it's going to be trying to go for about 15 uh, megabits per second, which is fine. It's going to look good for YouTube. Uh, I wouldn't go much lower than that. Uh, but then you're going to get, what you're going to get is you're going to get a much smaller file, look at my estimated file size, and an image that looks a lot better, but it will take twice as long to uh, export as it will uh, the CBR or VBR one pass. This is probably the best option. So that's kind of a, that's a quick explanation on compressing video. Um, if you go to audio here, audio, you can pretty much leave the same these days. Audio files and bandwidth with the internet is, uh, work pretty well. Uh, audio tends to be a lot smaller than video, so you can usually keep the, uh, this up. AAC is good, 48,000 48, hertz is really good. And then if you're doing stereo or 5.1 or mono, uh, stereo is going to be the, the most common one to use unless you're doing a stereo mix within Premiere. So um, just a quick explanation on audio. You can pretty much, I'd say, leave that alone. I'm going to hit OK and save those settings. 
I'm going to go up here and check uh, on the name and choose a location that I want to save these. I'm going to put it in the same folder here so I know where it's at in the Platinum Proxies folder, just so I know it's at for right now. But 1080 Timeline, you're going to name it. Well, on here, you can name your file. Uh, so if we say this is 1080 Timeline for whatever commercial you're doing for Platinum commercial, uh, be sure to name it. I even usually say this is for YouTube, so I remember what this file is for. Hit Save. And now let's go down and say that we're creating a master out of our 4K. We want a 4K high quality master to keep uh, for later uses. Uh, so what we can do here is we can pull down this and I'm going to use QuickTime. QuickTime is one of the best ones to use uh, for uh, creating a master file, the ProRes codec. And if uh, depending on what you shot on, you can either go ProRes. HQ is usually plenty high for mastering a, a commercial. If you want it just like uh, full, full quality, if you're done doing like a movie that you want to master, uh, like a feature length movie or even a short film, you might want to go ProRes 4444, which is a huge file, lots of color data, lots of color information, but the quality is going to be really good. What you going to do is use this as your master to compress from from now on. Uh, so we can use ProRes 444 if we want to go in and change, look at our settings here, video settings. I'm going to keep everything, pretty much everything check marked the same uh, because I want this to be the highest quality possible, same frame rate and so on. Uh, if we go to audio, audio once again, um, whatever you want you to export your audio out to, uh, stereo in this instance works just fine. But you'll notice as we scroll down, we don't have that same uh, window that you can open up and do variable bitrate. That's because ProRes does not have a variable bitrate. Every codec uh, or every different codec, ProRes HQ, LT, ProRes 422, ProRes Proxy has a set bitrate that gets higher and lower as it goes from different version of different version. And you cannot set a variable bitrate. This is this is a solid. This is why this is such a solid codec because every frame uh, contains its own compression information. But we can hit OK. We can choose the location. Click on that name right there and choose a location. I'll just put it in the same location and we'll call this Platinum ProRes. Did I do 444? Four, four, four? I did. 4444 four, four, four. Master. We can call this a Master or just even that would be good right there and save. One thing that you'll notice under here is you have all these different formats. You even have a Raptor DCP. If you're delivering to a movie theater, they're going to ask you for a digital cinema package. This is where you export to digital cinema, cinema package right here. You can select this. Uh, I'm going to change this from ProRes. We're going to go to the Raptor. And then you can go up and tell it what format you want it in. Uh, PAL is European. You don't want it in European. You're going to do... Um, and the only option that it has right now, it does not do 4K projection. Most movie theaters, there's very few movie theaters, uh, IMAX being one of the... Um, one of the exceptions uh, that you have to deliver or, or that will show in beyond in 4K and beyond. I believe IMAX is like uh, two 2.5K projection. So it's around like 5K basically that it's delivered, that it's, uh, uh, that IMAX is, is projecting in. Pretty much all cinema theaters shoot or, or uh, project in 2K. So you gotta be familiar with your aspect ratios as well. Uh, I'm gonna cover that in the next episode as well. We've got a film that was shot on 35 millimeter that was transferred to digital and we're gonna show you how to how to work with the aspect ratio to get it delivered. Uh, but now, yeah, so you can do a Raptor uh, DCP uh, file. Once you get everything, everything the way you want it, um, and this is flat 24 frames per second because uh, movie theaters only show in 24 frames per second. That's it. So you have to, when you deliver, deliver DCP, you have to deliver a movie that's been 24 frames per second. And if yours is 30 or more, it's going to conform it and remove frames to get it down to 24p. So um, got to plan ahead. All right. So now I'm going to hit go up here. When you're ready to go, you go up to the top and you hit play and it will start encoding my footage. So that one's going to be for uh, YouTube. The next one is going to be my uh, DCP digital cinema package that's being delivered. Um, I'm not really delivering it, but uh, ju just showing you how. So that's kind of a quick overview on uh, using a media encoder and uh, compressing your footage. I'll show you quickly kind of how to do proxies. The next episode is kind of a bigger episode. It's going to be on on working with aspect ratios and uh, changing your aspect ratios and compressing your footage to proxy. And it's, it's got a few other little subjects that will be covered in that video. So make sure you watch the episode before this and watch the episode afterwards to get a kind of a full idea on compressing. And the next episode is really covering transcoding specifically, uh, which is transcoding to proxies and it is compressing as well. But uh, I talk a little bit about the difference between compression and transcoding. Well, I'm gonna let this finish up and then just uh, um, open that up and kind of show you the, the file size and then We'll call it good. Okay, the first one is done and the second one's encoding. I'm just gonna uh, hide this and, and show you this really quick. Let's go to I'm gonna go to my finder here. Okay, so there is my timeline movie right there and the amount that it, and the size it ended up being, it looks pretty close to what it um, predicted. It's around 60.1 uh, megabytes. If we open this up, just do a quick preview. 
Yeah, quality looks nice. Oh. I can't really see any compression in it. Uh, so it is pretty good quality and it's gotten down to quite a quite a small file size. So now I can submit this, I can upload this to YouTube. It won't take too long since it's a smaller file. It's a 1920 by 1080. Uh, and it's been letterboxed because it went from a, a wider aspect ratio, a 2K or a 4K, a true 4K aspect ratio to, it's like a 1.85 to one to, and, and it, we did the extraction down to, 19, uh, down to 1920 by 1080. So add the letterboxes there. Uh, but now this one, look at the look at the um, the DCP here. It's creating this uh, MXF file inside. That, it creates a folder and adds this MXF file in there. Uh, that's going to be delivered to the cinema, and then they load it onto their projectors. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So if you have any questions, I showed two different options here, but you also have lots of other options. If I right click on this, we can reset the status, and I can go in and do another compression compression if I want to. H.264, any one of these that you choose, it's going to bring open all these presets that you can use for Twitter, uh, Vimeo, YouTube. Um, and it's even got the same if you go to like a QuickTime, it has a few of the QuickTime. It's mostly ProRes ones uh, that you have, but some older uh, NTSC stuff, DB NTSC, and, uh, and so on. So you have uh, the most commonly used these days is H.264 and QuickTime, and it's to some extent, and to some extent, the DNX, which is the Avid codec that's kind of the equivalent of ProRes. But anyway, all right, so that's it. If you have any questions, let me know and go ahead and watch uh, the, the previous episode if you have it and watch the next episode. Thanks for watching.